Hello everyone, I'm Ilya, a software engineer at Report Portal. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to connect Report Portal with the Cypress test framework. Additionally, this guide is also available as a blog post. If you prefer reading, simply click the link below the video. If you are using Playwright test framework, be sure to check out our previous video. This video is prepared for individuals who utilize the Cypress test framework and are seeking enhanced, more detailed and visually appealing insights into their test results, with capabilities for AI-driven defect triage and the creation of test automation reports. Once integration with Cypress is configured, you will be able to monitor test results in real time, which is incredibly beneficial for comprehensive and extended test suites. Furthermore, Report Portal can process your data with machine learning algorithms. If you aim to accelerate the analysis, you can rely on the Report Portal Analyzer to swiftly pinpoint the underlying causes of defects. Report Portal also offers detailed visualizations of your automation process, enabling you to produce graphs, monitor trends, and maintain oversight of your project stability. And much more. So, today we'll go through the process of setting up our integration. Initially, we must install the Report Portal agent for Cypress into our project. Following that, we need to enter some Report Portal instance information in the configuration options. Lastly, while it's optional, incorporating additional data into your report can improve its comprehensiveness and help you maximize the capabilities of Report Portal. Our packages are available on two registries, NPM and GitHub packages. You can select your preferred package manager for installation. Uh, below are the commands to install it using NPM, Yarn or PNPM. Let's move to the development environment to install the agent in our project. We are working with a tiny project here that includes two files with Cypress tests. They are here. It also has a Cypress configuration file and a package JSON. Now let's execute the installation command. At the time of this recording, the most recent version of the agent is 5.4.0. After installation, it will show up in our dependencies. All right. The subsequent step is to set up the agent and input some essential options that will link report portal with your test files. If you like a Cypress config file, you will need to create one. After entering the required options, executing your test as normal will enable the report to be accessible in Report Portal. We've outlined some basic options here, but for a comprehensive list with more details, you can refer to the agent's repository. Now let's access the Report Portal demonstration instance version 24.2 to gather the required properties from its UI. We can log in it through GitHub and proceed to the profile page. On this page, we'll locate a configuration example section for Node.js. From there, we can easily copy the JSON object and pass it to our project. Let's go back to the development environment and open Cypress config file. I'll insert it here and assign it to a variable. The project and endpoint options are already filled out. Now we need to specify the name of the launch uh, that will be displayed in Report Portal at the launches page. Currently, it's labeled as launch name, but let, let's rename it to custom regression with Cypress. Next, we have to set the API key. The API key can be created from your profile on the API keys page. Just click on the Generate button and enter a descriptive name for the intended use of the key. After copying it, go back to the project and apply. I have previously generated an API key for this video and stored it in the environment variable. 
we can retrieve it from environment by entering process.env.report portal API key. That completes the configuration options for the agent. Next, we need to set up Cypress to utilize the agent as a reporter and set up the report portal plugin. After setting that up, we can test its functionality. Just run our test as normal via npm run test. Ok, the test run has begun. In the meantime, we can track the progress in the report portal. Let's navigate to the launches page. And we can refresh the page here to see our first launch named Custom Regression with Cybers. Although it's still in progress, we can explore it to use the reported structure. We can see our suites here and the tests reported within them. If the launch is still in progress, uh, we can refresh the state and see the most recent results. Ok, let's return to the all launches page. And we have 5 tests here. In total, 3 passed and 2 failed. Let's now get back to the code. We can also review the embedded reporter in Cypress. The statistics here are the same. Now that we've generated the basic report in the report portal, let's explore what additional data entails and how to input it. Here we encounter various types of additional data. Description and attributes can be utilized to provide more details about the test and are also helpful for filtering and creating some widgets, such as component health check. Additional logs and any attachments can be added to the report. The test case ID used as a history ID across different launches. There is also an option to modify the status in the report portal for a specific test result. Comprehensive details about the data and ways to edit are available in the agent's documentation as usual. To implement data attaching methods, some adjustments in configuration required. In a Cypress support directory, we need to add an end-to-end.js file with custom report portal commands. These commands are similar to native Cypress commands and can be used in the same way. I already have this file in a project and I will just put the necessary require call here. How do we add attributes and a description? It's quite simple. We just need to use a custom command within the tests. Here we've included two attributes. They usually follow a key value format, but you can also use just a value. The description is just a string that outlines what the test case entails. Now let's head over to the project and implement these changes in our tests. Let's make the modifications here. Attributes and description have been added. For example, we can note that this is a demonstration test and specify the feature it covers. For the description, we can include more detailed information about the test. I have also prepared similar data for other tests, so let's apply it. And for another test file as well. Now let's execute our tests uh, one more time to observe how they appear in report portal. Returning back to the browser. Let's refresh the page to wait our new launch here. Yeah, now it's here. Uh, we can dive deeper to the test case level and here are our test cases. We can observe that the attributes and a description have been added. Uh, these attributes can now be used to filter the list if necessary 
for example to view only the test result list for their uh, this check should fail feature yeah and we he here see only failed tests additionally the description supports markdown format allowing you to enhance your descriptions using markdown as demonstrated explore the edit item editor on a ui and you can conveniently make edits and preview them right here let's proceed another essential part of the data that can be incorporated into the reports are logs and attachments the error logs for the failed test cases are automatically captured by the agent and reported to enhance the detail in your reports you can utilize a specific report portal log commands designed for each log level it's excellent use that starting from version 24.2 report portal support supports microseconds precision for timestamps therefore the log times reported by the agent from version 5.4.0 will be more accurate which is extremely valuable for logging rapid operations to maintain their sequence regarding attachments they can be reported using the same comments as logs but with a file included here we simply need to specify the content the file itself its content type and the desired name. Screenshots generated by Cypress, including those captured for fail tests, will be automatically attached. Let's look at how this is implemented in a code. Here is our example. And we can insert some logs here. Such as the type link has been clicked, for example. Regarding attachments, we just attach a fix tour here using the log command. Let's also capture a screenshot using the default Cypress command for it. And of course, let's repeat similar steps for other test suites. Now we'll execute our tests once more and review the data in the report portal. Let's refresh the page. That's our new launch. Uh, the speed of attachments reporting, of course, depends on the size. So let's wait until the launch finish to check all tests. Okay, it's finished. We can go into the deepest level and check the tests that we've added logs and attachments. Here are the logs for this past test. Let's move on. Here we see several logs that we've included along with error logs that is automatically reported in case of failure and the default Cypress screenshot. Let's inspect other tests. Here is our fixture image and the full page screenshot captured using the size screenshot command. All right. The next type of the data that can be incorporated into the report is a test case ID. If you wish to identify your test as a specific test case from a test case management system such as Jira, you can utilize a test case ID. This can also be established using a report portal command. Simply invoke the set test case ID command and input a value. Note that if you alter an item's test case ID, the history of its prior executions will not be displayed, as they will be regarded as results from a different test case. Let's assign the test case ID to one of our tests and observe the results. Here is the test titled Check that Google page contains Google Word. Let's assign the test case ID for it. Okay, we use size set test case id command and set it as test123 for example 
All right, let's execute the tests. I skip the wait time, so moving on to report portal. Our launch is available here, but let's check the previous execution of this test. Here we see our test case ID, which is typically generated by default based on the code reference, indicating where the test is located and any parameters if present. This ID is generally unique and remains constant across executions unless the test location changes. How does this help us analyzing test results? In Report Portal, there is a history page where we can view the history of this test from all prior executions up to the current one. The test is here. For instance, here we observe the executions of the test from launches 3, 2 and 1. We can see that the test previously passed. And let's now return to the main page and observe what happens when we manually assign the test case ID. Upon accessing the details of this test in the latest launch, we'll notice that the, our new test case ID displayed. However, if we navigate to the history page, we'll not see the history of this test case from previous executions. Only the from launch number 4. Therefore, if you intend to move a test from one test scenario to another and wish to keep the execution history synchronized, you can explicitly set the test case ID. Historical data can also be accessed on the test page with logs. Um, yeah, and here we observe that this item uh, lacks previous executions and no history items are visible here. However, if we revisit the previous launches, we will see that it does have an execution history. All right. Regarding the status, it indicates the test outcome, typically categorized as passed, failed or skipped. If you need to specifically update the test status in Report Portal alone for any reason, this option is available. Let's head over to the code and explore how to manage this. We aware that this test title checks that Google page contains Google Word has previously passed, but we can utilize the Report Portal commands to assign a different status to it. Let uh, mark it as failed. Now let's execute our test once more and check how it appears in Report Portal. Here's our most recent launch. Let's dive in and observe the test result. This test originally passed during the test framework execution, but now it displays a failed status, which we explicitly assigned. That brings us to the end of today's video. You now understand the essential steps to integrate your Cypress automation tests with Report Portal. If you found this video useful, remember to subscribe to our channel to stay updated with new guides and product news. A link to the GitHub repository with the agent and example is available below the video. Be sure to check out our website and join our Slack channel to connect with the community and the core team. Thank you for watching. Thank <laughs> you.